Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel if you're new, and welcome back if you're not. Today, I got 50 plus things for you guys to do in New World Eternal. This list is in no particular order, I just thought I'd put a list together of things that you could do in New World Eternal. I'm sure I missed a bunch, but these were just 50 plus things that I could think of off the top of my head. Alright, let's get into it. First things first, complete all quests. This includes the main story, this includes the side missions, this includes the skill progression missions, this includes the mountain quests, this includes the side quests, this includes everything. Just go around and complete all the quests. Next is max out your faction vendor. This is pretty self-explanatory. Your faction vendor has a level and you're just going to max that out. Since we're talking about the faction, get all of the faction transmog. Your faction vendor sells armor and you can actually buy this to use it as transmog. This can get very expensive, so watch out, but go ahead and get the transmog. And again, since we're talking about transmog, fill out all of your transmog. Go around and just get all of the pieces, all the armor, all the gear, just get everything that you can. Another thing players can do is go around and get all of the Heart room. This is something you can do if you want to switch up your build a little bit, have some fun, you can go ahead and switch up your ultimate. Players can also work on territory standing. I'm talking about getting every single territory to 30 territory standing or more. This means that you can own the highest tier house in any territory that you want. The next one we can talk about is collecting all of the lore pages. I'm talking about documents. They're called documents in New World Eternum and just go around and collect them all. This is something that I've been doing. I almost have all of them. It's not that it's hard, it's just that it takes a long time. Let's switch it up a little bit from the grind and let's go ahead and do PvE arenas. Another thing players can do once you're at endgame is go ahead and start running mutations. Mutations change weekly, I'm pretty sure, but basically there'll be three randomly chosen dungeons every week, and these dungeons will have a very difficult challenge in them just to make them harder. So it could be you take X damage from something, or it could be you have to watch out for this little thing on the ground that will just do damage to you or whatever. I don't know. It just They switch it up. They make these mutations harder. You get better gear from it. They're actually really fun. So go ahead and run some mutations. And also, while you're running the mutations, you might as well go for your rare mounts. If you didn't know, you can actually get rare mounts from mutations. Now, not every mutated dungeon will drop rare mounts, but a couple of them you can get them from. Also, while you're doing mutations, you can go ahead and get all the mount accessories from these mutations. Again, not all mutations will have mount accessories in them, but a lot of them do, and these accessories are actually best for your mount. While we're talking about mounts, go ahead and complete all of the mount races. Let's talk about a couple things that you can just max out in the game. So you can go ahead and max out all of your trade skills. I'm talking about harvesting, mining, logging, weaponsmithing, armoring, engineering, just max them all out. While we're maxing stuff out, let's go ahead and max out our gear score too. The gear score just hit 725, so go ahead and start maxing out your gear score. Another thing we can max out is your weapon. If all of your weapons are not level 20, already go ahead and max out every single weapon this will make it so you can basically be any class in the game that you want another thing that players can do is go around and get every single shrine in the game this one seems a little bit tedious but it's actually not too bad because you can get resources along the way like modes special ores logs herbs whatever you can just gather it while you're running around getting all the shrines. also you can find documents when you're going around getting these shrines that you didn't have before and this will just save you from needing to grab those things later another thing thing that players can do is prepare for the next season. So right now, currently at the time of this recording, we are on season 6. So what you can just do is just start preparing for season 7. Another thing players can do is go around and get every single artifact. If you didn't know, there's new items in the game, very powerful items called artifacts. These artifacts can completely change how a class works, and that's what makes them so cool. So basically, I'm using the fire staff, and right now this artifact that I'm using allows me to use a great axe with my build, which is like completely unheard of before this artifact game out. So just go around and get every single artifact that you possibly can. Another thing players can do is participate in invasion. You can go ahead and sign up for some invasions if you're interested. For the new player, if they don't know, invasions are not like dungeons. You cannot just queue up for an invasion. If you're interested in an invasion, you must go to conflicts. You must go down to what invasion you want to sign up for, and you're going to have to sign up for the invasion. And then you'll have to be logged in during that time frame that it's scheduled for, and you will be chosen to participate in it or not. Invasion Invasions can actually be pretty fun. The first couple rounds, I think they should either take out or just move up. So like, invasions don't really get really fun until like round four, I think it was. So if they made round four, round one, 
and then scaled it up from there, I think it would be a way better game mode. It just takes a little while to get going, like the first couple waves are just super easy and tedious, but invasions can be fun. Another thing that players can do is go ahead and play some OPR, this is PvP game mode, Outpost Rush. I have an Outpost Rush guide on my channel if you guys are interested, and this game mode is actually really fun. It's a 20 vs 20 game mode, all you have to do is just queue up for it, get in the game, and go have some fun. Speaking of PvP, let's do 3v3 PvP arenas. There's two types of arenas in this game. There's PvE arenas and then there's PvP arenas. We are talking about the 3v3 PvP arena. This again works like OPR. You can just go ahead, go to activities and queue up for it. It's very nice to get in and out of this game mode. It's a little bit more sweaty than OPR because there's only three people in the arena. So if you're a little bit squishy or you're not sure what to do, they will clearly see that and they will jump on you like no tomorrow. So make sure if you're going into 3v3, you're a little bit more prepared for that one. Since we're on the topic of PvP, let's go ahead and get the PvP tracking to 200. If you didn't know, in New World Eternum, you can get PvP XP, and this gets up the PvP tracking. That's a lot of PvP there. And the max level of this tracking is 200. The higher level you are on your tracking, the better rewards that you're going to get. You can go ahead and click on rewards there, and you will see at what threshold you will unlock what rewards at. The later levels, you're obviously going to get better things in the earlier levels so the more that you do this the better stuff that you're gonna get and since we're still on the topic of pvp why don't we just go ahead and talk about signing up for wars so much like invasions invasions is kind of a pve sign up thing you got to do wars is the pvp things you got to sign up for so much like how you signed up for invasion you're gonna go to the map you're gonna go over to conflicts you're gonna scroll down to what war you are looking to sign up for and you're gonna head over to that location and just sign up for the war again you will have to be on at a certain time frame whatever time the war is scheduled at you will see that in the conflict section and you will have to be online and picked at that time all right let's keep the ball rolling here you can go ahead and buy three houses if you haven't already in new world eternum you can own properties housing um go ahead and buy three of them you are going to need three at end game regardless because you need to be able to place the trophies in your house to get the buffs to run whatever you're trying to run you can also use these houses to teleport back whenever you need a recall point so they're actually really nice to own another thing players can do is go ahead and fill all three of those houses with stuff. In New World Eternum, when you're adventuring, when you're leveling, questing, doing all these other things, you're going to be getting furniture. You can go ahead and just put it in your houses. While we're on what to put in your house, go ahead and get tier 4 trophies. Like I said earlier, you're going to want the houses to put trophies to do endgame things. Go ahead, get tier 4 trophies and throw them in your house. Once you got a bunch of tier 4 trophies and they're all in your house, why not go ahead and get the ultimate trophies? If you're doing multiple things in New World Eternum, if you're running a bunch of different mutations in New World Eternum, you're constantly switching up your trophies and this can just be a hassle, a pain. So go ahead, if you combined all of your tier 4 trophies together, you can make an ultimate trophy. This way you never have to touch your trophies and you can just leave it up on the wall and you get every single buff in one trophy. It is so nice. Alright, let's keep it going. Another thing players can do is do your dailies. There's like dailies that you can do. I have a video again up on my channel with my daily routine and this kind of goes over some of the dailies that you can do but there's a bunch of different dailies in the game there's quests there's like things you can get so just do your dailies and if you want to see what i do on a day to day that video will be linked down below as well all right on top of everything that we've talked about you can also capture forts again in new world eternum there's locations on the map and now, if it has a locked symbol, that means it's already been captured and you have to wait the time limit that it says until you can capture the fort again. Owning different forts will give you different buffs. So, for example, one of the forts, if you own them, it gives you unlimited fast travel for free. You don't have to pay Azoth to fast travel, and this is actually pretty nice. You do have to be flagged for PvP in order to enter the fort or take it, and you do get PvP tracking for capturing this fort. It's actually a very nice AFK method to get some PvP tracking XP, so if you're doing something on a second monitor or if you're playing a different game watching a movie or whatever you can just sit in a fort and capture it and people can come in here and kill you but sometimes you can get very lucky and just don't even have to worry about it you can just capture it all right another thing players can do is make one of every class so go ahead and make a dps class go ahead and make a tank class go ahead and make a healer class make every single class that you can in the game just switch it up a little bit basically if you've been doing i don't know like hatchet spear or something or hatchet bow or musket or whatever if you've been 
recommend doing one specific class, like a DPS character, switch it up, do a tank. If you're a tank, switch it up, do a healer. If you're a healer, switch it up, do something else. Make one of every single class, and that way you can do anything in any situation that you want to be in. If your team needs another healer in a situation, you'll have no problem gear switching to that class and helping your team out. People will love you for this. Make one of every class. Another thing players can do is get character titles. In this game, uh, you can pick a title for yourself that people will see beside your name. It's actually pretty cool. You can just go ahead and start collecting all these titles. Try to get as many as you can. Um, this is actually a very cool thing in the game. There's some sick titles out there. Another thing that you can do that's PvP related is participate in PvP races. At Pacific times in the day, usually at night, there'll be giant faction PvP going on in certain territories. You can find out when these races are going on again by opening your map and much like invasions and wars, go over to conflict, scroll down until you find races and check what time they're going on on your server app. Once you found that out, you're going to head over to the territory that's in and you can start running the missions, you can fight over the castle, just basically do what your faction's telling you to do. You can go ahead and switch your chat to strictly faction. This will help you just, you know, just see what's going on in the thing that you're actually trying to do and uh, just listen to what your team's saying. While you're participating in faction races, somebody might invite you to a company. So the next thing that we're going to do is why not go ahead and join a company? This just helps you when you're trying to do, say, a hard quest or a mutation or you're trying to get a squad together for OPR or run 3v3. Whatever you're trying to do, you can always ask your company and a lot of the times people are just going to be down to do whatever because they need to level up stuff too. So go ahead and join a company. We mentioned earlier that we are currently at the time of recording on season 6. So speaking of seasons, go ahead and do your season pass. Every season there's a season pass that you can do. This comes with a thing called a journey and activity card. The journey is things that you can strive to do in the game to unlock uh, more of the season pass. There's also rewards in the journey that are actually kind of worth it. So go ahead and do the journey, level up your season pass, and I have a guide on my channel if you want to just sit there and strictly focus the season pass and get it done quick, easy, no BS. I have a guide on my channel. Again, I will leave a link down below in the description. Next thing we can talk about since we're talking about seasons is participate in seasonal events. Like currently, again, at the time of recording, we have the Halloween event going on right now. If there's a seasonal event going on, like the Christmas event or the Rabbit's Revenge, the Springtide Bloom, or whatever, participate in the event. Get some rewards. There's cool furniture you can get. There's cool transmogs. Sometimes you can get actually good things from there, like better gear or charismatic seals or whatever, it's actually kind of worth it to participate in some of these events. All right, another thing that you guys can do is get endgame bags. Again, I have videos up on my channel, an endgame advanced tips and tricks guide. If you guys don't know what to do for your endgame bags, the perks on the bags actually do matter. So go ahead, again, down below, link will be there. Go ahead and get your endgame bags. Speaking of endgame bags, go ahead and get your endgame tools. Again, I have a video down below. It's actually the advanced tips and tricks guide explaining what perks you're going to want on your tools because again when you're in that end game the perks on your tools actually does matter now let's go back to a little bit more of the grind let's go ahead and get all glyphs and brimstone if you didn't know in the territory called brimstone sands there's a thing called glyphs that you need to open up doors or chests and just get the loot. So basically go around and get every single glyph that you can. Do not rely on other players to open this stuff for you, just get it yourself. Another thing that players can do in this game is do some world tours or chest runs. So in the yellow recruitment chat, you'll constantly be seeing people do an X WT, um, X chest run. If you see that, that's a world tour, WT is world tour. Go ahead and queue up for that, participate, check your map where everybody's grouping up if you don't know where... Uh, uh, the call out is where to go just check your map and you'll see a giant group of people grouping up just head over there and follow the group i already kind of mentioned this earlier with mutations but just go ahead and run all the dungeons if you haven't already you need to run every single dungeon on the base mode in order to even do the mutations i don't know why i didn't mention this earlier but yeah, go ahead and make sure that you do run all the dungeons. Another thing that you can do is run corruption portals. In this game, there's things on the map, they're red symbol like this, and you're gonna wanna do corruption portals. You'll see again in the yellow recruitment chat, um, people saying X portals, X Merc. If you see Merc, they're heading over to Mercard and uh, they're doing po a portal run. So if you see that down in the recruitment chat, go ahead and run some corruption portals. You actually need this in order to level up your heart root, which is your ultimate. 
Another thing that you can do is go ahead and get every single achievement in the game. So right now my achievement percentage is 73.8. You can just go ahead and try to get every single achievement in this in the game. This is like kind of a long term goal. This is something that you can do throughout your new world experience. But this is definitely a nice goal to have. It just keeps you engaged, keeps you doing things. What's the next thing that you can work on? Go ahead and try to get every single achievement in the game. In New World Eternum, they added a thing underneath activities called Elite Trials and Raids. Go ahead and participate in these. Again, in the yellow recruitment chat, you'll be seeing people do X Worm, X Hive. These are the raids. Go ahead and participate. You need to be in a group. There is no queuing feature for this. You must find a group on your server in the yellow chat before you can even queue up for the raid. So go ahead and participate in the raids and elite trials in New World Eternum. Again, underneath the activity section, they added in something new in New World Eternum update called Soul Trials. These are solo PvE fights. They're actually pretty fun. You can go ahead and get an artifact from this. You get rewards from this. So go ahead and start running some Soul Trials. They're actually pretty fun. Um, they're just iconic past fights throughout the campaign that you can just relive in and they're just really cool. All right, I'm finally seeing the end of this list. Another thing that players can do in New World Eternum is get to the top of the leaderboards. A lot of people don't even know there's leaderboards in this game. You can find it underneath the activity tab in the top right. Go ahead and check this out. You can even get rewards for being top of the leaderboard in this or top five or whatever. Um, not everything on the leaderboard has rewards, like some of the easier things that you can just kind of like boost, you can't, but things that are really out of your control that you can't boost, you actually have to be a dedicated player and be working towards to even earn, those are the ones that kind of give the rewards, basically the best time in a mutation run, the most OPR wins, this, that, like there's just a bunch of other ones that you can do, I'm not going to list them all here, go ahead, check out the leaderboards and try to get one of the top uh, spots and earn yourself an exclusive seasonal leaderboard reward. Um, another thing you can do if you're kind of getting bored in New World Eternum is you can start a band with your friends in Tour Eternum making some gold. Get some friends together and basically go from town to town and set up in the town square and just play some music. People will tip you for the perk that you're giving out. People might stop, listen, dance to it, like just hang out with you while you're uh, playing some music in these towns. So go ahead, start a band, tour, turn them, make a little bit of gold while you're having some fun with your friends and leveling up your music skill. Speaking of music, another thing you can do is go around and collect every single music sheet in the game. You can buy them off trade posts, you can find them yourself. Just get every single music sheet in the game. Another thing you can do is get some friends together and perform in the theater this is kind of like an rp thing but there's a theater in brimstone sands and the emotes in this game actually are really good so you can kind of put on a performance in the theater for everybody on your server we're gonna go back to the collecting here collect all furniture schematics you're gonna need these schematics in order to craft certain furniture pieces for your house some are rarer than others some are more expensive than others but just go ahead and collect each one of these learn them so that way you can craft anything you want for your house maybe have a special furniture piece that your friends don't have that you you can show off and they'll go they're gonna want to get that speaking of collecting again you're gonna go around and collect all the food recipes there's food recipes in new world turnum for example desert sunrise it's one of the most used items in pvp and you need to find the food recipe in order to be able to craft your own so go ahead and collect all of the food recipes in the entire game so again you can make yourself any buff food that you need another thing you can do is go to your local pub and have a pint with the locals just take a load off relax you know what i mean uh we've been doing a lot on this list i think you deserve to have a beer and the very last thing that anybody can do that i could think of is complain that there's nothing to do in the game if you guys watched to the end you guys are freaking legends thank you so much if you guys like this video make sure to leave a like please subscribe to the channel uh, we're almost at 800 this is actually huge it helps out so so much again if you guys like this video i have more content on my channel like this and i'll see you guys in the next one i'm outie peace